welcome to Teachers Off Duty podcast. If you haven't been with us for very long, my name is Lauren Woolley, Mrs. Woolley and Fifth on all social medias. And I'm Tal Williams or Mr. Williams pre K on social media. And today we have a guest with us. Yes, I am Gabe Dannenbring um, on TikTok. My handle is GUnit24. And on Instagram, <laughs> it's just Gabe Dannenbring. The GUnit24 is, uh, I made that accidentally. I never thought that that would be like. That's his story. I love least. it. Yeah, no. It's an accident. It's yeah. adorable. Well, so like <laughs> the backstory on that was when. Like when I first made my TikTok, I wanted to be completely anonymous. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, students will never find me as G Unit 24. Oh, they found you. And then, like, the first video I make, it was like huge. I'm like, oh, I'm going to keep going with this. And now I'm stuck with G Unit can't 24. Really, um, can't really it was a grind. I didn't, no, my first very videos did not go viral whatsoever. So my, my, fir my first one did. The weird thing is, though, like, I changed my name. Like probably good like three months. It was Mr. Williams' classroom. Yeah. And then TikTok had a glitch and they're like, you need to change your name or we're shutting it down. And I was like, <gasps> oh God. So I changed it to Mr. Williams Pre-K. Mine, I think, I, mine started out as a private account too because I never intended on making TikToks. I was just watching them. Yeah. So I think it was just like, Lauren with like six N's or whatever. <laughs> Lauren Skater Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren X Skater Girl X. <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I changed mine pretty soon after that also. But like one of my students found me somehow. I, like I, it was like, I, I don't even know. I, I didn't say that I had a TikTok or anything. I think kids just like, if they're older kids, they just yeah. like search you on all social medias because they try to find you. And they're but, like, mm. yeah, she found me pretty quickly. I had to block her. <laughs> so now, now, and then you changed to. But the Mrs. funny Wally. thing is, like, when I when I went public with my account and like started making content for real, I never unblocked that one student. And now <laughs> yeah, it's funny. like still a joke. She's like, "Are you ever gonna unblock me?" I'm like, "Nope." <laughs> I, I was having a conversation with uh, the kids that I cro that coach cross country. Mm -hmm. And one of the boys, he was like, hey, I sent you a DM. Can you can you like look at the video? And I was like, dude, I will never respond to a DM from a student. He goes, never. He goes, bro, you know me. Just like, just respond to it. I was like, listen, there's a thing called liability. And I, that is. <laughs> not doing that. I'm not going to do that. Like the last thing I need is for you to go home and tell your mom, hey, Mr. Danbury responded to my DM. Like that, it goes bad every single listen, time. Listen, earlier today we were at a photo shoot and one of my former students, she's graduated from high school. Like I used to coach a speech team. And she graduated last year and she, out of the blue, texted me today and was like, Lauren, are you going to follow me back on Instagram? This isn't funny anymore. <laughs> no. I was like, wow, speak of the devil. <laughs> they don't forget. They Kids don't. never forget. They don't. So I followed her back finally now that she's out of high school and, you know, an adult. This is why you teach pre-K because they have, they don't even know how to spell their name. Because they're you, They don't three. know how to use the internet. Yeah, yeah. I've learned that like. Kids never forget a bet that you make. No. Uh, mm -hmm. My first year of teaching sixth grade, actually, it was right when COVID hit. And I made a bet with my students and I said, I bet that we will not go the entire year being full time in person. Like, OK, we'll take that bet. And they're like, what do we get if, if we win? I said, if if we win, if you win, I will bring my Xbox to school on the last day of school and you will be able to play whatever game you want. We never left school. We were always full time. We never went remote. Oh my God. And no. those kids didn't forget at all. They, they were on my case forever about it. Like, hey, when are you going to bring your Xbox? You Did you bring, bring your Xbox? No, I didn't because <laughs> I couldn't. I like, there was no way I could bring my yeah. Xbox, plug it into like like this old smart board. There was a 0% chance that it was ever going to work. Yeah. I was like, oh, be, kids will forget this. No, they don't. Yeah. They never forget anything. Something I never forget ever are the god-awful classroom management strategies 100%. I choose to use. <laughs> Um, in my younger years as a teacher, when you're just like literally just pulling anything out of thin air to try and yeah. get through the day. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. We are going to Warble. talk about some of our like worst classroom <laughs> management strategies we've tried. And, you know, some that maybe we use that work for us and just some of the funny stories that go along with those. Because I definitely have a oh bag full of them. <laughs> I feel like it's like also like where do you get them? Right. So my thing Pinterest. is. <laughs> I, I Pinterest these. Um, I feel like most of the time it's like during a PD and it's always like someone who has never taught in their life, never taught during a pandemic, but they have like an, a PhD in education or something like that. I think there's actually a, a, a doctor in education or an EDD. We're going to say it's EDD and so someone's like going to correct me. EDD. EDD. -E -D -E -D. <laughs> but it's like they're always like, this is what you do. I'm like, have you ever been in a classroom that's never going to work? Um, the weirdest thing I ever tried, and maybe someone can like correct to tell me, maybe I did it wrong. That's why it didn't work. <laughs> Have you ever seen the cl the clothespin thing? 
Um, uh-uh. Wait. On the lanyard, and it has a student's name. Oh, like, okay, so at my, at my old school, yeah. like the entire school for the elementary wing, we mm-hmm. all had to use freaking clip charts, which I What are clip charts? Hate, Ooh. I'll explain them. I it's, hate with a passion. I hate them. I can tell. So a clip it's chart, bad. can you? A clip chart is essentially just literally a chart on the wall that has different colors. So every student would start on the same color. Mm-hmm. So like, let's say in the middle of my chart, the color was blue or whatever. If they did something really great, I would go say clip up and they would go move their clip up mm-hmm. to the next color, which was like, I don't know, orange or like if they did something really, really great, they'd clip up again and they'd put their clip on purple. Yep. And if they if they did amazing that day, they'd clip onto my lanyard on my neck. So but then it also had a negative side of it where they would, go. you know, if they did something, you know, not so great, you'd have to say, okay, go, go clip down. And in the, in front of the whole freaking <laughs> do the walk class, of shame. Yeah. Walk yeah, of shame. Do the walk of shame. Mm-hmm. And they'd have to clip down on the chart. And there were like three colors below, but it was like a district policy. I had it to was, do it. It's like public shame. It's like they're ringing the bell going through town. <laughs> shame. Like, yeah. well, shame. 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 No, a hundred percent. But I like, we had to do it and it was the worst because it would set off so many kids emotions yeah. and get, I would have so many tantrums because of that. And like that's what what reminds me of the yeah, clipping on your lanyard. Thing. Is what that what it was. was? But see, I I like and I couldn't. So like, okay, I just didn't do it right <laughs> because I was like, <laughs> I we had the thing and it was like color coded and I would just remember being like, you're publicly shaming a child, which is like not like a great thing to do. But like, yeah, the walk of shame and all that stuff too. And I was just like, this this can't be working. Like, there's got to be something that says this isn't a great idea. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't figure out why. This makes so much sense. I'm so sorry, fees are elementary. I thought. I couldn't figure out why other teachers had their kids' names on on the lanyards. I never followed through with that, I guess. I didn't know that was like the top prize that you got to clip it on the, the lanyard. I just never walked around with the students. How, how did the kids respond to it? Like when they had to go up and clip down, oh, were they... they Full-blown like, panic tantrums. Yeah, I like, believe it. Or they'd be like, you know, I don't even care anymore. Yeah, I don't. I'm going to go down <laughs> again. Like then it was just like... Yeah, like, it didn't work. It like did a battle not work. Go to the it, bottom. Did, it didn't work. No, yeah. not at all. And then it would just cause more problems. Yeah. So like if, I don't know... Just, it could work for maybe some other districts, but it didn't yeah. work where I was teaching and it just made things 10 times worse. What I tried doing my first year of teaching, I was teaching sixth grade mm-hmm. and I thought I could go into the year and be like, oh, my classroom management strategy is going to be, I'm the cool young guy. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be awesome. They're this gonna is going to kill. Alive. I was like, I'm going to show up be like, what's up guys? What's going what on? Mr. Dan and bring, yeah. you know? And I thought that was going to be the thing. No, that was the worst thing. I lasted with that management strategy like three days. And then <laughs> I realized... Okay, cool young guy's not working. No. This is yeah. not what... They just roasted you. They just they? they roasted me. Yeah, yeah, it was awful. And I was actually speaking at Arizona State, and I told them, I said, okay, here are the things I wish I would have known before my first year of teaching. Thing number one, being the cool teacher is not an effective classroom no. management no. strategy. You no. can be cool while having an effective strategy, but... Just being the cool teacher never no. works. They're, right. they're just because they eat you alive. Right. Yes. Like they okay, like all the kids who are not in my class yet love that I'm on TikTok. Like they're like, mm-hmm. Oh my god, this is a TikTok teacher, like right. walking down the hall. But as soon as they get in my class and they realize that I'm like really strict mm-hmm. and like, like oh. don't let them get away with stuff, they're like, Oh I messed up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like the biggest disappointment of their mm-hmm. lives. <laughs> That's what I always tell my students where you know, I say, hey, in order for this class to be fun, you just have to follow my rules. If you don't follow the rules, this is not going to be a fun class for you. Yeah. Do you guys ever like, so one of the strategies I used that actually worked is like coming up with the class, what are, guidelines, we didn't call them rules. Yeah. And it, like you guys sit there together and do it. But doing that with preschoolers, it's like, you're I, like, I'm trying to coach them along, trying to make, what do we think about running in the classroom? <laughs> like you shouldn't do while picking your nose. What do you and think would like, be good expectations? Don't put your finger in your friend's 100%. nose. Yes. Like, yeah. That would be a good, I'll write that one down. But what about like, you know, <laughs> talking when a teacher is like, mm-hmm, that one's fine. <laughs> See, you think that's just preschoolers, but I do the same thing with fifth graders. Mm-hmm. And like we do our class constitution. Oh, okay. So, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So um, I'll have them do that on the first day of school. And they all come up with like the most obscure things. Like, I'm like, what do you think would be some things that could be good expectations we all could do to make sure like our classroom is a cool, like groovy place to be? And they're like, wait, wait. What? Do you say groovy? Yeah. No. Um, I <laughs> listen, I put as our class constitution this year just says stay groovy at the top. Nice. And all You're, of so our hip. Expectations. You're so cool. You're so and hip so, and drive. I'm hip. And <laughs> but they but they were coming up with like these really specific things. They would be like, make sure that you pick up every pencil off the floor. Yeah. And I'd be like, 
why are we so focused on just like one item? Like, how about just clean up after yourself? How about a general statement? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like kids come up with the most ridiculous expectations for the classroom. Yeah. What I do a lot of times with my students is at the beginning of the year, I say, how do you want this school year to go? Oh. And I say, mm -hmm. oh, you know, how do you want this school year to go? And what type of classroom do you want this to be? And they'll say, well, I want to be a positive classroom. I want to be one where you know, I can express myself. Yeah. And then I say, okay, what rules should we have? So then that gets done. And then the kids start thinking and they're like, oh yeah, there are reasons to have these rules mm -hmm. because that's the thing about like middle schoolers they think rules are stupid they think the oh, yeah. only reason why yeah. rules are in place is because it's an adult just trying to control them and from a teacher's perspective it's like no we're just trying to make sure right. that this school doesn't burn down because <laughs> yeah. if we didn't Please. have rules it would be crazy town Anarchy. and it would go awful and like think about it when you're okay when you're told like you can't do something you're told no about something or whatever and you're not given a reason why doesn't it drive you insane oh yeah it makes me want to go yes. do it exactly Even as an adult makes me want to yeah. go do it as an adult right so like with the same thing with my fifth graders like mm -hmm. i'll like tell them straight up okay why do you think we can't go running through our classroom <laughs> like why do you think that's a bad idea and then we'll talk about that and they'll be like yeah because we could totally just like you know trip and die and i'm like yeah, yeah. so i'm not just doing that to because Million I'm not dollar fun. baby. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're doing that because we don't want anyone going to the hospital. And I don't want to be sued. <laughs> right. I, I would like to keep my license, please. Mm -hmm. It's also like, I love it when an, an admin comes in or ours were like our education directors because, you know, it's preschool. And like, okay, I just have to tell this is specifically one year. Mm -hmm. um, I notoriously had the worst class and I loved them. They were adorable and funny and all that stuff. You know, terrible. They're terrible. They're so bad. <laughs> And they just wouldn't listen. And so we were going through like the assistant teachers kept quitting. Like we couldn't get like a sub in. The, it was just it was it was horrific. And mm -hmm. so finally, our education director was like, what? You know what? I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in and I'm going to like see what's going on and observe. And I was like, please. I, and at this point, it was like <laughs> I was like eight years into teaching. Yeah. I'm like, I, baby, I promise I'm I'm I, there. I, I, I don't know what else I could be doing. Did you did you try tapping on their desk and asking like, them to um, settle? Like, you tried that. One? I was like, hey, hey everyone. Wait, have you tried? building a relationship oh try that try that next time <laughs> it's like um are you tell are you asking open-ended questions and i'm oh, like i wonder yeah. what would happen if you didn't bite your friend <laughs> like <laughs> your friend's crying i wonder why like did you, know. did, did you try asking how they feel did you try how, that how your... are you challenging them <laughs> maybe they're not challenged these, oh no it's just like great right, because it's like horse they're going through the entire thing are you challenging are you doing this are you doing that are, what is the class mark are they are they too bored are they doing are, all this stuff <clears throat> so she comes in and she observes them one day and I meet with her after. She's like, I just, I don't, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to tomorrow, I'm going to try leading and see what happens. I'm like, baby, please. She made it two hours. Oh, no. And then during nap time was hysterically crying and then started <gasps> screaming because the kids wouldn't sleep and left. And so I'm just like sitting there chilling by myself and I'm like, and then the uh, an assistant director came and she's like, I, I am so sorry. And we were able to get the kids down. But I'm like, oh, it's so it's not me it's like sometimes and i think it's like it can't be a blanket thing i've never used the same classroom management style two years in a row no because the kids mm -hmm. are different oh yeah. apps, 100%. you have to adjust you have oh, 100, to, there was 100%. there last year what i did which i never thought this would work this was the bet the best worst classroom management thing i've ever done <laughs> if it so works, it works it was it was in february and morale was really low yeah morale was low kids didn't want to do anything and i remember um i had all these rocks laid or minerals i guess on my desk they were awesome rocks. they were no, minerals, no, sorry, minerals. Sorry, <laughs> science teacher minerals and i had all of them sitting out and these kids did not want to participate and it was just like every time i'd ask a question you'd hear crickets and i was like Dang it. Okay, you know what? Whoever answers this question right, you get graphite on your desk. I will give you graphite. Boom, hands start going up. Like, there you go. Is graphite the, the glittery one? No, graphite's like what your pencil's made out of. Uh, that, yeah. Tell okay, you wait, know wait, that. Are you like, are you, wait, 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 wait. Are you like, uh, like, a stone person? Am I a stone guy? Like, like, the, like, like rose quartz and stuff like that? Like, to, well, if. Crystals. Am, yeah. Am, okay. Are you a crystal I'll, guy? I'll say, I'll say this. I'm not a crystal guy, but. I can um, do sixth grade science. Like that's the yeah. level is yeah. being able to identify a, a crystal. So a can, can you can you identify a no. crystal? I went to I went to school in in in, in Mike Pence's Indiana. I know nothing. <laughs> no crystal education. I there. did not get a crystal education. Science does not exist. <laughs> yeah, we, but like like maybe Indian that was not priority. You know, um, I could tell you anything about Indiana history. <laughs> Indianapolis is made out of squares. That's all I know. There you go. Um, but like, do you have a Himalayan salt lamp? No. 
Dang, well, I, really I do. Gonna... I, okay, I do. Not a Himalayan salt lamp. Oh. I've got this giant emerald rock that sits Ooh. on my desk, and it's awesome. It's like so emerald. cool. That is my new okay. rock. Okay. That or mineral. That's my new mineral. When kids are like low and like not answering stuff, I just boom set around their desk and I think it's the coolest thing ever. <gasps> we... All it takes is a rock. All it takes is a rock. You kind of have that. You just yeah, okay. But... Listen, you just gave me an idea. Are you talking? Wait, what are you gonna say? With your mouse. I was you just gonna say. That. I'm like, I'm gonna take corner gym, and yeah. then when Damn kids rock. are using big brain, I'm gonna put corner gym on their desk. Or fake plants. They love fake plants. Take a fake plant. Boom. Put it around their desk. See, this okay. Does not work with pre-K. opposite. <laughs> with my kids, I have little fake plants, like decorative ones, on their tables because I do flexible seating, so I don't have desks. Mm. So, like, I'll have fake plants decorating their tables they literally will take the plant and stick it in their like they have the little caddies of yeah. like supplies they'll stick in the caddy and like move it out of the way they're like get this plant out of my way like and i don't want it and yeah so the plant wouldn't work but i bet you corner gym would work hmm. corner gym would oh my god okay look at that i learned a new strategy to you <laughs> you know what strategy doesn't work what and i've seen a lot of the administrators try to perfect this it's always failed You've got, let's, we'll set the scene. You got, you know, your classroom. You got some kids who are blowing up, getting all mad and, and yeah. going wild. Send them to the principal's office. What doesn't work, giving them a bag of Cheetos uh. and saying, hey, pal, go back. Go, why is go this back so in there. universal? Like any teacher, and it's always, why? It's I always, I mean, I it's love always Cheetos. a bag of chips. Always, yeah. Always. And it was always. munching on them, Cheeto yep. fingers. Hey, come back in. Doesn't work. No, nope, it was chips doesn't work. Or, or lollies, I think is what uh -huh. y'all call it, like lollipops. I just got a picture of my corgi sent to me on my on my watch. I got very distracted. <laughs> but no, they'll like come back and I'm like, they're like, remember, if you listen to Mr. Williams for the rest of the day, you can get a bag of chips and a lollipop. No, they can't. Like, <laughs> but I also like weird, like, okay, where do where do y'all sit in the debate of like reward? Okay, here's here's ooh, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. So in secondary, with the kids being a little bit older, yeah. I think about a lot of times, what are the bare minimum classroom expectations? Okay. Mm -hmm. What what's the bare minimum? And I set those bare minimum standards yeah. and I think okay, should I be rewarding a kid for meeting okay. the bare minimum? Yeah. I don't think so. No. I don't think you should all the time I be rewarding them for the absolute no. bare minimum. I agree and disagree. Yes. If there's like a, if there's it, like, it is situational. It yeah. is situational. And that's, it is. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I think it's situational. Okay, so like I have kiddos this year. I have some kids that don't need my help at all with behaving at school. And, you know, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, I don't have to reward them. They're right. going to do it. And then, you know, I, just me verbally praising them is enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then I have a kiddo who's like, if I behave for math, can I have a piece of candy? Yes, sir, you can. And he behaves the whole time. All the tootsie rolls. And, yeah. And mm -hmm. then, but like, people always ask all the time, well, well then what, don't all the other kids ask for candy or whatever? And I just flat out tell them like, yeah, they do. But I just tell them, no, you don't need the same thing that somebody right. else needs. Mm -hmm. to Like, you already know how to, how to conduct yourself. And this kid might need something extra to yes. help him. I think when you explain that, hey, they might need something extra or right. the other thing might be candy, but maybe you want an extra 10 minute recess or you want to play right. football or whatever. So for my class, like I know PBIS is something like, you know, nationwide mm -hmm. that everyone, you know, practically everyone I think we never, uses. We never had to practice that. Because we're a, really? I, was a, I was a federal oh, program. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Never mind. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone else. Everyone else. <laughs> what, so. what is everyone PBJ? PB and J. I. Um, <laughs> What's that stand for? <laughs> Why are you quizzing me? Positive, wait, positive behavior jelly. incentive system. Oh, okay, that makes sense. But that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, intervention system, something like interventions that. Interventions in there somewhere. Yeah, interventions in there, but um, basically, it's you know ignoring the bad behavior and rewarding the good behavior. And okay. honestly, there are there it's it's hard to buy into because you're like. All day long, how am I going to sit here and compliment kids on doing something they should already be doing? It's a hard thought as an adult to be like, you should be sitting in your seat paying attention in class. Like, that's what you're, that's a bare minimum mm -hmm. expectation you should be doing. But like, I can tell when I, like, in my school, we use, because um, our mascot's a bear. So, yeah. my school, we use bear badges and bear paws for we the K6. We did cut paws, yeah. So we have um, bear paws are a whole class incentive. So like when my entire class is doing something really great, I will praise the heck out of them. Yeah. Like if they came in in the morning, I do soft starts. So in the morning, like once they get all their things for the day and they eat their breakfast, if they have like the first 15 minutes, they can play board games, they can play with like the STEM stuff or whatever. Yeah. If they're all coming in the room quiet and they're sitting there and doing all their stuff and you know, it's, 
peaceful and calm. I'll just be like, oh my gosh, guys. I'm like, you're so impressive. Like you just came in the room super quiet. I didn't even hear you guys walk in. Great job, one bear paw. And like they have to earn 25 bear paws um, as a class. And every class on our entire elementary wing does the same thing. And we have bulletin boards outside of each um, classroom with the bear paws that are posted so everyone can see how each class is doing. And when they win 25, we will vote on a class reward. So mm. I will, um, like, we just, we got our first class reward last week. And um, they will, I literally open up the floor to suggestions. And they'll suggest, like, at first they suggested something. Like, okay, I'm known on TikTok as the CEO of class parties. Because I just, I go big or go home. Yeah, <laughs> It's fun for me. I mean, I... I get it. it like, I know that it's a huge debate about spending money on your own, on your class and stuff. Right. I choose to do it. It's, you know, it's, that's mine. I choose to do that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. so they, um, the first class party this year, they uh, were like, one kid suggested he's like five minutes of extra recess. And I said, dream bigger, five baby. minutes of extra <laughs> recess. I said for 25 bear paws. And he They're was like, 25 minutes of extra recess. Right? <laughs> he thought he was asking for too much. He was oh. like, Two minutes? I was like, honey, I'm like, you got 25 bear paws. That's a big deal. I'm like, make it worth your while. Yeah. And he was like, oh, okay, 20 minutes of extra recess? I'm like, okay, that's better. Then they had suggestions like, one person said like, no math all day. And I was like, okay, I can't meet you with all, with no math all day. But like, how about we do number corner, but we don't do a math lesson that day. Mm, cute. And they're like, all right, deal. So I'm like negotiating yeah. like the terms of the agreement right. with my fifth graders. And we'll put like so many suggestions on the board. They'll vote as a class and choose the reward. And then like I tell them like, okay, it's probably going to take me like a week or so to get the supplies together. We'll yeah. get the party next week. So this, the first party they voted on was an ice cream sundae party. I saw that. It looked delicious. Yeah. So, and I, we watched. Um, what can we, we do just, in here to earn a I know, ice cream like, sundae um, party? You Not just start have to say nice I'll earn all the bear pods. <laughs> right, come on. Bear down. Here we go. You, just got, you just got to compliment me a lot. Um, <laughs> so... They um, they were learning about the Incan Empire, so we I, they've never seen the Emperor's New Groove. <gasps> so we watched the Emperor's New Groove while Great we movie. made ice cream sundaes, and they like they loved it. I like decorate the room and everything. I put tablecloths out and little centerpieces, and Thank I had you. the sunday like bar. They love it, and it, like it shows them like okay, if we are working hard and we're getting these bear paws, like we could be earning these parties like all the time, all the mm-hmm. time. And then there's individual rewards with the bear badges where. Like they can just be doing anything like I like we have an acronym like bears is the acronym, but it's like be accountable, respectful and safe. And so I'll say something like I think, you know, so and so is being so respectful. They just help so and so pick up their box. They dropped all over the floor or whatever. You can get a bear badge. And I can straight up tell when I have not given out bear badges in a mm-hmm. while because their behavior goes feral. Like mm. I wonder where that is. Too. I don't know. But as soon as like. Sometimes I have to remind myself, I'm like, wait, you have not rewarded somebody in a while. And so, like, if it's crazy, I'll just be like, I really love how Gabe is sitting at his table and he's quiet and ready to go. And then everyone will be like, <laughs> and I'm mm-hmm. like, yes. Can they, can, so like, can they lose? No, that's, that's the whole I, thing. That's what I it can't too. be taken, what they have earned ha- cannot be taken away. I like but that. But how I make like the class party fair. Uh-huh. is that I will straight up tell them, I'm like, you do not get what you do not earn. So I'm mm. like, if we earn a class party, those who have put their effort into earning the party yeah. will be a part of it. If you oh, have not okay. helped out the class to earn the class party, like if everyone's behaving but like one person, yeah, th- like that one person won't, might not be invited to the whole party. Mm. Gotcha. Like, and just me saying that alone yeah. is like, they're like, oh crap. And I'm like, yeah. you try me, I'm serious. Yeah. And like, they and they know like I don't give them anything that they don't earn if they ask me for candy I'm like you can't ask I'm like I don't give it if you ask me for it I know a lot of teachers in middle school do like the point system where they Mm -hmm. like let's say you tell your class all right we've got five classes period one through five you're in a competition yeah you are going to earn x amount of points every day or you can learn or lose x amount of points Mm -hmm. every day and now you are in a competition with all the other classes like the Jolly Rancher Wars yeah yeah Yeah. it's good one thing that I've found that works really, really, really well when I have a sub mm-hmm. to like manage the classroom, yeah. bribe them. Yes. I bribe okay them. I bribe them. I am not above bribery. I'm not. No I bribery. Told them, I, told, I told all yes. my classes, I said, okay, we're going to do a team thing here. Mm-hmm. If I'm gone or when I'm gone, if you can go the entire day without a single name being written down, I will buy the entire 
you know, our seventh grade team donuts. I'll buy all of you donuts. Mm -hmm. They didn't reach their goal. We had some names right. written down. And odds are I'll never have to buy donuts because that's a pretty right. tall mm -hmm. goal. Yeah. But they all behave significantly better when you yeah. bribe them. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. It's not, you know, it sounds like a joke, but it's true. When you have some sort of reward system, 100%. it does incentivize yeah. kids and, drastically. And and like you said, you yeah. have to be consistent with it. Oh, yeah. Because when they like, forget why, about yeah. it. Right. Yeah. right. Here's my thing, though. And like, this is why you, people who maybe don't agree with the reward system, this is how I feel about it. Like, They'll you'll have the arguments of like, oh, well, why do we have to reward kids for doing what they are supposed to be doing? You're supposed right. to go to school and learn. Yeah. But think about it. Why do you go to work every day? You don't go to work out of the goodness of your heart. You go right. because you need a paycheck. Mm -hmm. That's right. your kids incentive. Kids don't get a paycheck. Yeah. Kids don't get paid to go right. to school. They just have to go. And it's, what's their incentive structure? But you, what's their but you incentive? get incentives at right. work, right? As, as they work, you might get paid every week, but you also get bonuses. You also get, you know, to go on Wait, trips you guys or get whatever. Bonuses? <laughs> I get, I get uh, <laughs> many bonuses here, actually. Like, if I show up and look good, they give me an extra couple thousand, <laughs> okay, you know? Where's James? James? Um, it's only for me though, so it's it's my, it's my incentive because it only works, you know, for really. James for me. told me I was the one who was gonna bonus I'm so this sorry. week for that's, this. That's right, really that's sucks it. for you all. <laughs> no, I think too, like like I don't, and it's not like an always thing. Like I don't always do, do the, but like there is. I remember like I had like two weeks of the kids not napping, and that sounds like such a stupid thing, but like in pre case, she's like you need that time to do pre to like prep and everything, and so I told him like if you guys nap, and if you don't want to nap, if you're not tired, if you just sit quietly on your nap mat with a book. You don't get up. You're not playing. I'll bring donuts in. And like I, I left and I got back to the school and I walked in. They're still sleeping. And I turned on the lights and, you know, the, me and the assistant were getting them around. They were like, donuts? Like immediately. And I was like, <laughs> so I had the director come in. I ran down the street to grab donuts. I really didn't think they'd but be sleeping. It works though. <laughs> no, it works. Like, no, here's a question. So if we create an uh, incentive structure for students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can we create an incentive structure or what can administrators yeah. do to, to create an incentive structure for teachers? That's so we do what's called conscious I discipline, which is sounds like PBIS, but in, the only way conscious discipline works is if it, you do it from the top down. Mm. So your administrators have to do conscious discipline to the teachers, the teachers have to do it to colleagues and to the students, and the students do it within each other. But so give me an example. So, like, um, like same thing with like uh talking about the positive not the negative like i mean like clearly if something happens you talk to them about the negative but you're right. not like you know focusing on that harping but, on it all the time right yeah. but it's also like just the accountability process of it too but like i think it's the same as like if things are going really really well in your class and in, in your, at your school for example and you're like you know what instead of doing a professional development at 6 a.m on monday you're, I'm going to send you the video and you guys just get it done at some point in that week. You don't have to come in at 6 a.m. Or like, I think that's like incentive work mm -hmm. for teachers or to, you know, to, you know, we would do like all, we had like all day professional developments and they're like, you know, during COVID, why don't you guys like go and do it at home mm -hmm. and you guys can have mm -hmm. Monday off of when you're supposed to do professional development, but just know within that week, you have to do eight hours of this. So if you don't want to do it on Monday at home, that's fine. But then you have to do it two hours after work every day or whatever. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that would be it's awesome. And off. like, I, I know that a lot of schools like to use the gene days as an incentive. <laughs> like, give up on it, hun. It's, it's not working. Ki yeah, teachers are no. going to wear jeans if they want to wear jeans. It's and not it's, a it, it doesn't I, matter. I look at that as it's almost insulting sometimes. Yeah, yeah it is. When it's like, oh, you guys work so hard. Jeans. You get I'm to wear jeans. I'm going to allow you to wear jeans. Which aren't you can even wear comfortable. Jeans. Listen, like, <laughs> okay, I got, a fun, I got a real quick funny story about that. And then we have a fun activity we're going to do. Ooh. So um, last year, it was like during Teacher Appreciation Week. And um, an, an administrator who's no longer at my school, he, I think he was so busy that he forgot. <laughs> and so he, in the middle, it's like Wednesday and we get an email that was like, Hey guys, happy teacher appreciation week. You guys can wear jeans the rest of the week. And we were like, so just today and tomorrow, cause Fridays are always dress down days. So we get two days of jeans. jeans. Yay. It is a soft Thank in you. the face. Jeans. Yeah. Jeans. One time uh, for a teacher appreciation gift. I got a sticky note that said, thanks for hanging with us. No. Oh, no, no. It said, thanks for sticking in there and a single piece of gum and a pencil. <laughs> that was <laughs> legit. What what a, a gift for teacher appreciation. Uh, it I, was in every teacher's mailbox. Oh, my gosh. At that point, and it's not even like, I don't even need anything. If you just sent an individual email to everyone genuinely talking about something that they actually did, like yes. actually giving them praise about 
not a blanket statement. That's enough. You don't need to give me a used stick of gum and <laughs> a half chewed pencil. Like I think it would be a good idea. <clears throat> listen up, my principal. Um, I think it'd be a great idea if you went in and gave every teacher like an extra 30 minutes of just like chill time. Yeah. So like you actually go in my class and cover my class for 30 minutes and I can go do whatever the heck I want. Walk, cry in my car. So <clears throat> Jackie, if you're listening. Um, Let's do an incentive anyway, game. Yeah, we're going to play a fun little game for the last couple of minutes of the episode. So we thought it would be fun if we had kind of like a truth or truth, truth not or truth or dare, because it's kind of hard to do yeah. that with podcast microphones. So but we're going to um, do an incentive. The incentive is yes. if you answer the question, you don't have to suck on a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a kind of a, a negative, yeah. <laughs> negative incentive. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to have to do the activity. We, right. So we're going to answer some random questions. And if we don't want to answer them, we won't. Right. So um, we have Devin here, one of our producers. So <laughs> you can you're going to pick someone and you're going to pick their question. He gets yeah. to he gets to dish get them a, out. You, yeah. Oh, you, you have a lot of power. Well, let's just start right here. Let's oh, work yeah. our way down the oh, line boy. then. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, man. Since everything went so well for you on your first TikTok video, who is your TikTok crush? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, she, I, I don't know Answering her name. It. Don't know her oh, name. Oh, no, you have to know names. But I love her. Um, so just kidding, kind of. She's got, she was on, she was on The Bachelor. She was the blonde Hannah. Blonde. Hannah G. Hannah G. Yeah, she's my TikTok crush. I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't she is she's my tic, you, yeah, she's my Devin TikTok does. crush. <laughs> my wife makes me watch. Uh, sure. <laughs> I wish my girlfriend made me watch Hannah yeah. G more. Uh, all right, let's keep working our way down the line. Okay. Tell tell me oh. when the last time was that you lied. I had to think about that. Lemons are right there. <laughs> I space I Space, space. I have to say, <laughs> I'm gonna eat a lemon because I don't. I'm not gonna. Oh, <laughs> zoom in on this. Oh, I'm scared. The, he made these huge. Those are okay. really big lemon slices. <laughs> oh, oh, that was juicy. Oh, well, that's a lot worse than I thought. I'm gonna be. Oh, <laughs> that's a cute look. Uh, la, 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 la. It gets worse as it goes. <laughs> Oh, and I drink all my water. No. <laughs> I'm not giving you any of mine. I'm taking It'll my never cup. stop. Why is it spicy? <laughs> Why is it spicy? Oh, shoot. Shoot. All right. Okay. Oh, you're handling this very well. Uh, oh, that's what you call handling it well? <laughs> good job. Yeah. High five. All right. Let's keep working bad. our way down the line, and I'm going to pick a good one I just got here. nervous. Oh, oh Lauren. Devin, <laughs> just remember all those times I was nice to you? Not today. <laughs> Not today. Uh, have you ever had a student that you didn't like? <gasps> oh. Oh. oh no, it's bad. I can't I'm still a teacher. I, I love She's not all of my students well. equally. Oh, I don't. That was a great answer. I, all, I love them all. I know. I know. <laughs> oh my god. It doesn't feel bad, and then it burns. It does burn. Bite, I, I, okay, Vic says you need to bite it harder. I fit that. There, I, there are teeth marks in there. I want to see pulp in your teeth. <laughs> it burns. It like physically. Say goodbye to the enamel uh, on your yeah. teeth. You're gonna, be able to, <laughs> you're gonna sing. Ever so heard of a well, sore? I just got oh. bonding put on my teeth too. How did that feel? Is um, it rough? You're putting in here. It was. It's not rough anymore. Mm. It was before I had the bonding on it. All right. Let's work our way back down to the end oh, here. Boy. Have you ever had a crush on a colleague? <gasps> <laughs> and I think you should name it too. I had a crush on a colleague. You don't have to use their actual name. Give them a fake name. Yeah. Give them a pseudonym. But enough identifiers, mm. they know it's them. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. When I was a student teacher, there was this teacher at the school, and I was like, "Wow, she's a smoke show," and I thought she was gorgeous. Did I ever go talk to her? Nope, never did. Never did. Too shy. I was too shy. I stayed in my lane. Didn't learn anything from watching The Bachelor. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a smoke, smoke show, show is not a word. I mean it as <laughs> a smoke how? She was so kind also. Yeah, there you go. And a smoke show. <laughs> hey, can I borrow you for a moment? <laughs> uh, all right, Tell. You're up. You're going to... You are. Have you ever run from the law? Yes. <laughs> what? I was in middle school and we TP'd a house. Oh... 
And the people came out and they're like, we're calling the police. And I'm like, no, they're not. Why did I think you were about to commit, like, or just admit to a crime? No. <laughs> Welcome to a true crime you podcast. No. Grand Theft Auto is. No, I'm like, I'm so scared to get in trouble. So, no, but we were, we were TP and I was having a blast. And the guy was like, I'm calling the police. And I was like, no. So we hid for a second. We're going to like start again when, you know, give it 20 minutes. And then we heard the boo whoop and whoop, the lights. Whoop. And so That's we went right into police. the woods. <laughs> And then we went back to my friend's house, shut off the lights, and like it was like middle school. So we're like, we're gonna get arrested. That's not how that works. <laughs> well, uh, I keep licking my lips and getting more lemon. L- girl, that's why I answered that question. I thought, oh yeah, that's that's an easy one. Yeah, that's not bad. Ooh, that guy's Lauren, scary. Devin, I don't like you right now. Oh, you're gonna love this one because <laughs> uh, this one was like specifically when we were coming up with these questions. This one was like almost specifically teed up with you in mind. Of course. What's the last text message that you sent your significant other? Because I know it's got to be good. I know. Let me see. I said, ha ha ha, yeah, Teddy is a penguino. Okay, <laughs> because fine. Please explain. I will. So I texted my husband earlier to um, feed our dog, Teddy. And he said, I, I said, don't forget to feed Teddy. He said, I didn't. He ate. He's also got his Penguins jersey on because we are huge Penguins fans. Okay, that's cute. In hockey. And um, so I said, haha, yeah, Teddy is a penguino. And yeah, so that was what I sent him. All right. Okay. <laughs> penguino it is. I've never heard that term what? before. <laughs> 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 All right. We're moving our way back down to the end. Gotta All right. Get a good one. So, what is the dumbest thing you have ever done with your friends? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? Um, there are just right. so many. I think I got Gabe, it. and I know one of them. So if you don't tell the right one. Oh, jeez. I don't know. That was just pressure. All <laughs> right, so I was in college. I was in college, and uh, me and my friends decided to go out, went downtown, might have had a couple adult beverages, might have had a couple too many, and it was the night before the Conor McGregor-Floyd Mayweather fight, mm-hmm. the boxing match, when Conor McGregor was the extreme underdog, okay. extreme mm-hmm. dog. I mean, he was like well below. And uh, I decided to keep having some liquid courage, and and my uh, my friends saw how much how big of a Conor McGregor fan I was, and they said, "Hey, you know what you should do? You should put a bet down right now. You should bet on Conor McGregor." And I said, "You know what? I'm a teacher. That's a great idea." I said that is a no. fantastic idea. I did. I put a thousand dollars down oh on Conor McGregor gosh. when I was 21 years old in college with zero, no money. So that was all of your 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 money, your it life was, savings. It was, it was a massive amount of my money at the time. I was like, I was like oh, "Here we go, Ryan. Hi, here we go." And then the next the next evening, we had the fight party. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connor got KO'd. Yeah, and uh, I had to get a part time job after that oh, at the Dairy no. Queen. Uh, yeah, no Applebee's actually. <laughs> so, I do love. And their mac it was cheese. during it was during all you could eat riblets no. and chicken riblets? strips. Ew. Ugh. That's that just is. a weird food this name, the, riblets. Yeah, I'll never eat Ugh. one of those. Couldn't so yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever done with my friends. Fine. Yeah. All right. Tell. Do tell. Have you ever had a crush on a parent? Yes. I did. <laughs> do <Yeah>. tell. <laughs> okay. Does it count if I didn't know that they were a parent at the time? Yeah, it was a cop. <laughs> it, I've told the story before. I ha- I was at the grocery store and there was like a hot cop in front of me. And I'm like, okay, this is like a Hallmark movie. I'm a teacher and you're a cop. Um, and then we went out on a date like a week later and we were, it, it was a cr- right across the school and um, one of my students walked in. I'm like, I'm so sorry. A student's walking in. And then the student walked up to me and pivoted and was like, dad. And I was like, oh no. And so, <laughs> yeah, I would say that's a crush if you go on a date with a parent. And he's I'd a agree. smoke show. Is that the word? He's a smoke show. <laughs> I'm glad Wait, I got that Wait, wasn't that, that what you said? In, like when we were at the hotel the last time we came down, you were like, there's some really good looking cops in the lobby. <laughs> there were. The, oh my gosh. I look, I looked down and it's like- Is that your type? No. I don't know why. I looked down. You literally made the point to tell me because I was upstairs right. on like the sixth floor. He was like, you just I missed talk. the really hot cops in the <laughs> lobby. I was, I was like, does anyone want brunch? We had already eaten twice. And I was like, does it, there's like, we need to go down and look down. And it's just like, Oh my gosh, like you could tell that they have to do like physical tests every year. But by the time we got down there, they were gone. They were fighting crime. They're out saving the world. Out saving, you know. Rescuing kitties. <laughs> rescuing. Or was that Those firefighters? Are, that's firefighters. Wow. <laughs> that's close. Uh, know your uniforms. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, good. I'm done. All right. So we've got time for one last question. Okay. Lauren, Oof. 
What is the meanest thing you have ever said to someone? <laughs> the meanest thing I've ever said to someone? You probably called someone a butthead at least once. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was probably my brother. Probably my brother because, like, I'm not afraid to be mean to my own brother because, like, then at the end of the day, we still love each other, no. but, like, we're just going to be a-holes to each other. Um... But I don't know specifically what the meanest thing I've ever said to him was. What would you say to him now? <laughs> You're an a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> That's funny. No, I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't remember. So do I have to eat the lemon? I feel like you should have told us, eat the lemon. Eat the lemon. I'm not going to have any ammo on my teeth. You're going to have none. It's going to hurt to brush your teeth tonight. Dr. You Luna, I'll be back we next week. We won't feel bad about <laughs> it. We'll see you next week. See yeah. you next week, Dr. R. All right, on that note, let's all watch Lauren's face. Mm. Yeah. Now, quickly Oof. say bye to everyone. You do the send-off. Do the send-off. Do the send-off. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>